Kabitakashi Sonatine, which he directed, wrote, produced, edited, and is the star of. Uh, and we were really proud to release it here in America. Actually, the film that you're about to see has um, played all over the world and has, has gotten quite a few, uh, quite quite a bit of acclaim in all the different festivals it played and everything. And, and the film is actually quite has made uh, Beat Takashi one of the you know. Uh, most exciting directors uh, to come out of Japan in the last decade. And I think when you see the movie, you'll understand why. It's, it's a slightly different take on uh, the standard Yakuza film. Now let me describe a little bit um, uh, about the man you just saw, Beat Takashi, about his, his career, kind of catch you up to date with Sonatine. Um, Beat Takashi is a very successful actor in Japan, uh, but he was primarily known as a comedian. One thing you need to know about um, um, the Japanese Yakuza film is uh, it's a long-standing genre in Japan. The the uh, Yakuza or Yakuza um, is the Japanese equivalent of the mob. Which brings us now to what Beat Takashi did with them when he did Sonatine. Beat Takashi came out with these three cut your head off films of full-on brutality. All right, which was you know kind of blew everyone's mind. All right, and oddly enough. Um, you know, well, actually, maybe not oddly enough. These films actually didn't do that well in Japan. They got a tremendous amount of um, uh, press. He was extremely, uh, uh, he, he was you know, taken as one of the most exciting directors to emerge in Japan uh, in the, the last decade. But box office wise, they only did okay. It was the first film I had seen since I had been doing my take on gangster pictures that I was like, oh wow. This guy is kind of after the same thing I'm after. Now, um, if you saw the Chunky Express video, I said something like that about uh, uh, Wong Kar Wai, but it was more like about Wong, where Wong Kar Wai is coming from as far as his style and his, you know, I don't know, did I say quoi? But uh, uh, as far as with a beat Takashi, it truly is, he's actually kind of going down the exact same road I'm going in his own Japanese beat Takashi way. You know, and it's like, you know, it's it's his, you know, and he's much actually much more of a minimalist than I am, which is, again, one of the things I, 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 I love about his work. And just that whole, the whole scene with the, the Russian roulette scene is one of the most funny and surprisingly shocking scenes I've, I've ever seen. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's a true masterpiece scene. But, um, uh, but this was a, just a, like a bracing bucket of cold water in the face of uh, 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 the Japanese film industry and Yakuza films, and the critics loved it. So the film's played all over the world, has gotten all kinds of acclaim. Beat Takashi is actually the first uh, uh, Japanese filmmaker in maybe a decade to kind of uh, make a big break from Japan onto the world film scene. And so we were just really proud to uh, finally get it. So you can actually see it here in, in, in America, uh, you know, with the right subtitles, and we're just real proud of it. Also, one of the interesting thing, is Beat Takashi is such a star in Japan that he was cast as one of the, the bad guys in the film uh, Johnny Mnemonic with uh, um, uh, Keanu Reeves. But some Japanese money went into the making of Johnny, uh, Johnny Mnemonic. And so one of the things about it was they said, okay, we're gonna put some money in the film, but you have to film 15 more additional minutes with Beat Takashi for the Japanese market. So if you see like a Japanese import of Johnny Mnemonic and everything, it's like there's gonna be a lot more Beat Takashi scenes because he's so famous there, which I get a big kick out of. I still haven't seen that kind of that film, so I'd like to see that someday.